All right, so um, I showed um, a spreadsheet in the last uh, workshop, and there were several questions about how I got uh, to use the Google Sheets to create my word list. So I, I just want to demonstrate that for you. Um, this is in Google Sheets, not slides. So I do a lot of things with Google Slides, but this is in Sheets. And this is one of the things I had shown is that I use Google Sheets. And if I want to have kids syllabicate, uh, and I can do have them move my little bar or I move it and they tell me where they want to move it. And we do this and you know we change the words and, and then we move it again and do this. And so it's like, well, how did you get that bar? So this bar here is actually an image and it's an image of a blue rectangle. So uh, Google Sheets has the option to insert an image. And one of the options is image over cells. So I just put in an image of a blue rectangle and, um, and then squeeze it down. So what's nice about this is that for some students, you want to be able to mask so if I do this, I can mask this syllable and then this syllable, and I can expand it out and say, okay, you know, well, first, of all, you know, I do this, okay, what well, was this syllable and mask it so they don't see it and then show the second syllable and then, you know, read it together. But often it's just, just the line like that to, to uh, separate. And, and then I change it. So this image, I only have in here one time. And so I could, I could have it for each word, but what I do instead is I just change the orders of the words and just keep this one image here, this one place. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, so this one, uh, in this sheet, I had used the VCCV words and the VCV words, and so we would, it's like, okay, is it panic or panic? And, and uh, use this to help figure out, you know, set for variability. What, how do we adjust the, or flex the pronunciation uh, based on where we are breaking the syllables? So uh, I use Google Sheets a lot for word lists. So anytime I'm doing any word list, whether it's this with the different syllable types or whether it's in um, uh, my Latin roots or words pertaining to various Latin roots here, and I've got these, or uh, you know, for my grade, I have a grade two student who has to do wonders. And so I put it in, you know, anytime I have any word list, I stick it into sheets and then I can make these larger, quick, very quick flashcards. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So here's a list. This is for a student that, who has learned to uh, change the Y to an I when you make it plural or when, when we have any ending, um, the single vowel Y becomes an I. So this student has learned to, to do that as a spelling. So now he wants, we want to see that he can then decode the word where it has already been changed because you know, that messes kids up. So I've got this, I type my word list in here in a regular old spreadsheet just here. But then what I do to make my bigger cards, I take this list, right click on it and duplicate it. And that makes another sheet. Same as the first, but I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it this cards. Let's see, rename it to cards because I make my cards bigger. And this is a, just a really easy way to make a flashcard type of uh, uh, look. And if you tap, select this very top left corner here, it's on this side when you're looking at me, the very top corner, it's a select all and I can uh, grab, do you see the double arrow, and make this bigger. I can make the cell bigger, the column width bigger. I can make the column height much bigger. 
like that. And then I'm going to change the font. Let me go ahead and change it to Comic Sans and like 175. There. Now I've got a flashcard. So if that's all I needed, I can just scroll down and I've got flashcard size words. I see. Okay, like this. Uh, let's say I want to, um, uh, I'm not gonna ask the student to syllabicate these necessarily, but I'm gonna ask him to imagine the word with the Y. So rather than do my insert, I'll just show you what it would look like. Insert image over cells. That's how I would get that blue rectangle or whatever it is. Google image search, and you can search for whatever. And I'll often have my students, I'll say to my student, you know, what do you want your image to be? And I'll just change it on the spot and it's super easy, you know, pink unicorns or, you know, rainbows, whatever it is, and put that in um, as the image. Okay, but this time I'm going to insert a drawing. Now the drawing here, I'm going to make a text box and make it oh about that looks about the size of what I'm going to use maybe like that. Fill it with let's say I'm going to make it a light blue, and I'm going to uh, where to go? Here it is. I'm going to make a Comic Sans. Oh, where's that changed? And it 175. And I want the letter Y. Oh. Okay. That makes sense. Yes, 175. There. So we can imagine what the word was. Okay, and I'm going to just hit save and close. There we go. So I can have my student. Oh. Don't double click that. Just a single click and move it and say, there was the word and now it is this. We changed the Y to the I and added that. Or if I wanted to, I can take the image and now I've got a, a, a line and we can still syllabicate this way. But I think I want the Y here. Now we want that, okay? But this is only one. And if I want to change the order of the words, I'm going to make a, a macro. A macro simply is a set of commands that you're gonna do again and again. Well, rather than have to do the keystrokes again and again, I'm just gonna tell the computer, you know that set of keystrokes, do it now. So the way to do that is through the tools. Tools, macro. Record a macro, super easy. It says, okay, now what do you want me to do? So what I wanna do is I wanna select all these words. Uh, there, that's it. Select those words, so now they're selected. I'm gonna right click and hit this randomized range. It randomized the range, but I don't wanna be left here. I'm gonna go back up to the top of this, the, uh, the spreadsheet, so I have to click on that A1 again. And that's it. Save. And we'll title it. Change. There. So now every time I tell it to change, it's going to do that set of uh, instructions. Now, where shall I put it? I want to put that macro here. So I have to insert a drawing and we make it's called a button. I'm gonna do a little shape and I, I could do a text box, but you know, a little shape there and we can make this a different color. Make it a dark blue with uh, white writing and Comic Sans, let's say. Same. And change. And I did not get my white writing. There we go. And make it white. There. No, I don't need it that big. Here we go. 
Uh, okay. There we go. So this is now a button. I hit save and close. And I'm going to click it to select it and move it to, let's say, over here, somewhere kind of out of the way, maybe up here. No, I'm going to bring it down so that I, um, my little square, this guy doesn't, I'm not ever covering it. Okay, so if I bring this down here. And then when you, so, oops. When you right click on it, do you see the three buttons, the more? I can assign a script. So the, I want to tell it to do that change. Remember I named it change, the macro. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be changed. So every time I hit this button, it's going to do that change. There we go. Now, where did my button go? Oh, I, I have to move it down here. I need a little more space here. Where did my button go? I moved it out of the way. Right click and move it up. There we go. That's where I want it. And so I can move this guy here, move it back and change. And because it's random, it doesn't you know, it uses a random number generator and changes the order. That means occasionally you get the same word. It doesn't say boom, 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 boom. It uh, just changes the order in a random fashion. So random means occasionally you get the same, occasionally you get one different, and then you go back to the same one. You know, it's random. So there, that's how you make a randomizer. And this can be moved here, or you can use it to to uh, make a little bar and there we go so something like that right and you have the randomizer okay so why do i have the list i use these lists all the time so i put every word list into a list in in google sheets because i might do this where i just want to have something like a flashcard to just go through quickly for review like my latin roots uh, root words and you know the words related to them you know it's like I'll just do spaced repetition and we'll go through and just read a list very quickly every so often so we have spaced repetition but so here I have this list what else can I do with this list I use these lists for so many things one of the things I do is I will take this list and put it into a bingo game so it's it's here's the list I just go select the list select it, control C, and I use Bingo Baker uh, to generate cards. It's free. I can give it a name. I can get rid of the phrase, free space. And this is for 25 words. So I, um, I put in 16, so I'm gonna go with a four by four. I would change that. And then I just come in here to paste a list of words and click control V. There we go. I now have a list. So I would, then come up and change this, give this a title. And when I hit generate, I've got a bingo card. There we go. And I can print them, <coughs> excuse me, but more often I will uh, just play it online. You know, it's like I send the link to my student and they generate the card and they play online, you know, as I give clues and they, Play, play their card, whatever. Uh, uh, so that's one of the things I can do. And the reason like for my grade two, the wonders list, I just keep a running list. So I just take the last 25 words. So there were 10 words this week and then I pick the last you know, 15 words from the previous. So I keep adding the list and keep taking the last 25 or the most recent 25 and make a bingo game to play as review with my students. So um, my school doesn't allow bingo baker. It's, you know, they have most things blocked. So I just take the image of the card and stick it into a jam board to play, use it as a background in the jam board to play with my school students. The other thing I might do is go into wheel of names. Now I know Flippity, I know there's a lot of places that have wheel of names or the random name generator. 
a spinner. I like the wheelofnames.com best because it has options. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get rid of their list. I'm going to put this list in here. I can customize the colors. I can put in my little emoji in here. I can put various things in here. But here's what I do. I, uh, I'll come in here and I will put in dance it. Um, plus three. And I'll play like boom, you know, like where you, if you got the boom, you lose your, your points and we just play it as a points or, you know, I might put in a boom or I might put in jumping jacks. I, I like to do the active things so that my kids um, uh, have a reason to stand up and move. Jumping jacks and call it plus, plus two, whatever. I, I put in a few of these um, uh, movements. You know, I put, put another dance it and plus three. And uh, and as we spin, you know, if it lands on, rather than, you know, the popsicle stick that says boom, if it lands on a dance set, we all stand up and do a dance or we do jumping jacks or whatever. And I like that I can customize this through here to I hate when it spins for 10 seconds. I can make it spin for two seconds or three seconds. And then, I can say, I, I don't mind the confetti, but I hate the sound. I do not want the applause. I want no sound. I certainly don't want bells ringing when, when it does that. And I can change the colors, change the images and all that. So, and then, so if we were to play this two seconds, I've got a word, no extra noise. And then I can remove this word. We read it, we do something. Um, and we can play it. So I like the wheel of names and I just put my list in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll also go in and do something in flippity. Like I might, I have a board game that I have set up and I'll just pop the words into my board game. And then I've got a board game with reading the words. I, you know, if you wanted to do a sort, you could do a flippity manipulatives and then you sort it. So let's say we want to do this. And if I get the template here, make a copy. It happens pretty quickly, except when you're recording. Sorry, did I already have one up? Look at this, I may, no. Nope. There we go. So that's their template for their manipulatives. I just, you know, delete everything that they have in there. Delete, put, do paste in my list of words. There we go. And um, I can name it, rename this sheet as those were the IES words. Rename it. Or I, I, I would prefer uh, why, I can't even talk today. Why to I? There. You have to publish this. So to file publish to the web. Yes, I want to publish it for sure. Really? Okay. Ignore this part. Go here to get the link here. Click on that link. And now I have those words as manipulative. So if I wanted to do a sort, I come down to the gear icon and I can do a, a, a two column sort list. So we can sort it by where the I says I and where the I says E or however you want to do a sort. So you can do two column or three column or four column or whatever and do a sort. I, I don't do a lot of sorts, but it is possible uh, to do things. That, I do the memory cards, uh, you know, the concentration game sometimes and I'll just like pop the list of words in there and now I've got a concentration game and um, I also use um, uh, Playing Cards I.O. And that one is a little more complicated, but I can play Go Fish uh, with that easily. And, um, and I like that, but you know, that's a little more complicated. It's not just cut and paste. So I, I have other videos on using the Playing Cards I.O. So 
uh, I hope that shows some of the options and how to make that Google Sheets for doing word lists. Okay.